All right, all right. Welcome to the 14th call for the Wharf project, building the SDKs for the Antelope ecosystem. Um, little housekeeping up front. Uh, this is the first meeting we've had in a little bit. I've been away from my home office for a bit, and that's caused problems with scheduling. Um, hopefully, we'll have a couple weeks running here where we'll be able to do these again, and then maybe towards beginning of May, we may need to skip a couple weeks as well, maybe one, maybe two. So I will keep everybody in the loop on that. Um, kind of related to that, we, as in Gray Mass, are moving over to a new platform for doing activities like this. Um, it's, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it, it's called uh, Riverside. Riverside.fm is the platform and it lets you do live streaming and recording and a whole bunch of other things kind of all in one. Um, this is gonna be in a move to potentially open these calls up to more people. Um, right now it's kind of a calendar invite only. You need the to be on the invite to get in the Google Meet thing. And this is going to allow us to live stream to platforms like Twitch or YouTube or anything like that, Twitter, um, as well as automatically turn it into things like a podcast and stuff like that and help us with distribution. So I the goal here is to um, kind of modernize how we're doing this, make sure we have some ease and longevity on continuing moving forward and hopefully opening these up as the project becomes more uh, alive in production environments to developers across the ecosystem. You know, it'll be something that weekly developers using it will be able to tune into. It'll be like anybody that's watching will have the capability to ask to join in and then be able to join in live on the conversation. Um, there's just a lot of cool features that this platform can offer and we're gonna give it a shot. So. We're not sure when we're going to make that switch yet. We're just starting to do initial experimentation with that now. But um, I, we have more and more people coming into Telegram uh, in the Wharf channel and people reaching out to me directly. And the conversations are now spilling out into general developers' chats. So the audience for this, I think, is growing. And giving them a means to potentially participate in this uh, would be good. And if we still need to organize uh, like a stakeholders call for the remainder of the project that is aside from that, uh, we can always do that as well, like do both of those things in parallel. So um, hopefully this platform works for this purpose um, and we'll hopefully be giving it a shot soon. I'll provide updates whenever we want to make that flip and hopefully uh, give you guys enough of a heads up uh, when it's going to be occurring. So. I think that's all kind of the housekeeping I have out of the way. Um, moving on to what has happened since our last call. Uh, last call was on the 15th of March. So it's been about two weeks, maybe a little bit more than two weeks. Um, there have been a bunch of new examples published. Oh, I'm not even sharing my screen yet. Um, that's normally something I do before I even start recording. And there we go. Uh, we've been working on publishing some new examples of how this can work out. Uh, three new ones have come online, and there's more in the pipeline. Um, they don't take that long to create, to create this like base user experience within an application. But on our end, it's uh, working with frameworks we've never worked be with before. Like, I did the view one. Um, I don't know, a couple days ago or something like that. And I probably spent a couple hours just kind of looking up what things were called in Vue. So that way I knew where to put things and how to actually like build an example application. Um, we've had a couple of people in the community submit comments and issues about better ways to potentially do it as well. Uh, so those will be implemented. And hopefully these examples are going to be updated to provide people with a familiar uh, environment to be able to test out Wharf. You know, it's hard to walk into learning Wharf when maybe you've never used Vite or Svelte. But maybe if you know React, then you know you can have, be in this React environment and you'll feel a little bit more uh, comfortable and kind of understand where things are coming in. These are going to kind of evolve over time as best practices are being established for how to do it in each framework. 
but with the session kit and the web UI renderer being framework agnostic, it should work in all of these. We're just kind of finding the intricacies and differences in all of these on how um, how best to put it into these different worlds. So hopefully the community continues to engage in this stuff. Uh, it's been a pretty healthy engagement so far. I think we've had like maybe four or five people in the past couple of days that have pointed out things about various approaches. And it's like, oh, you could you know, put this here or this element isn't needed in the code base. And we're going to slowly keep iterating on those changes. Um, in the background, changing gears a little bit, uh, the UI has continued to move along. Um, there's a lot of back and forth between design and development right now as we're kind of ironing out what the base user experience is going to be in the web UI renderer. Um, I haven't checked on it very recently. Again, I've been kind of out right recently. Um, but I got an update last night that it is nearing completion, and I should be ready to kind of do a round of review. We're going to be covering it tomorrow on our de our design call that's going to happen in the morning. Um, and maybe by week's end, I'll have some better idea of where the progress on that's going to be. So that's kind of our big push right now is in the base user interface and just making sure that that's going to be good. It is. Um, Good enough to maybe start using, you know, like the elements will be clear. There won't be placeholder things like the one when you're signing a transaction and it says doing cool things or something. Um, so yeah, that's what's been going on. The team's been working hard on it over the last two weeks. Uh, it had to kind of be done sequentially. Uh, this was something I had passed along to Adam over the last week or so. Was that when we originally planned out? I think it's milestone three or four, the numbers are kind of jumbled up, so it's a little confusing. But it's the one about the base user interface. Um, we had to build all of the components first before we knew what the user interface elements would actually be, and we could get a finalized design. So now that the kit and the UI elements are kind of defined, we're layering the design over top of them right now. So hopefully that'll be done soon, and we'll be knocking out another milestone in this regard. Um, our big kind of development focus right now, aside from the design, is working with developers in the community. Um, I think I can safely say I've talked to somewhere between 10 and 20 developers in the community so far that are trying this out. Uh, a lot of them have provided really good feedback. We've been trying to record them as GitHub issues, as well as in Slack beforehand, just to kind of evaluate some of the ideas. Um, a lot of my time over the past week, while sporadic, has been engaging in these discussions, um, trying to like pick at what was hard, what was easy, and then kind of interpret that into what we need to change to make the framework even better for developers out in the space. Um, you're going to see a lot of incremental releases, like bug fix releases and minor releases coming out that are just addressing some of this feedback as we push more towards uh, an actual MVP, a 1.0. Um, and then aside from that, I think the last thing on some of these milestones is us driving towards cleaning up a little bit of the code base. Um, there is a few plugin architectural changes we need to make. Uh, there is a little bit of localization work yet to be done, like the Anchor Wallet plugin, for example, is not localized yet. Uh, that's being done this week. And then right now, I would say we have probably 75% of the plugins, which is maybe like 15 out of 20 of the GitHub repositories are integrated into our new localization pipeline. So we still need to complete the localization and kind of verify that everything's good. But the actual steps to get all of that done are in motion. So. All in all, that's kind of the status of the project right now. We'll be pushing forward on that. In the background, we're starting prototyping on the account kit and the contract kit again. Um, those, we're not going to see progress or maybe even prototypes until May, I would say, at the earliest, maybe even um, later May as we push towards a June completion on those milestones. Um, we, if you remember back in, January or February or something, we posed the idea of diverting all resources away from those projects to focus on the session kit and get to where we are today. And now that we're kind of 
really inching close to a functional session kit are starting to turn our attention back to the contract and the account kits, which the ideas have changed even since that pivot point. Um, but we're kind of excited to get back to those and make working with contracts and actions easier. So, so kind of the updates I have for today. So happy to veer this conversation in whatever direction uh, you guys want to head in, or we can, uh, and then once we're done with that, it's kind of free game or we can wrap up. So is there anything, any questions or comments on the kind of stuff I covered? That seems good. Awesome. Um, in terms of the project overall, I mean, um, like I kind of said, the agenda on this one was kind of light. I don't have a lot to show off today, necessarily, uh, besides just stating that these examples were out there and that we're really like looking for developers to try this out and um, try putting it in your project. Tell us what's bad, what's awesome, what we're looking for feedback to drive our uh, development based upon. Adam, you also said you had some milestone-based stuff you wanted to jump into as well. No, I, I just wanted to kind of just check in to see how, how the work is progressing. I, I think you've covered you've covered that already. That's great. Awesome. Cool. Well, I mean, we have I have time, um, so. I guess, is there anything we want to deep dive in on this call or anything like that? Jack, do you have something? If, no, there's nothing to uh, deep dive on. I would say maybe we even end it early, but then everybody has to go and actually test it. <laughs> I mean, I like that. <laughs> no, and that would be great. Um, I'm hoping next week we're going to be able to go into the web UI renderer and go over um, all of the stuff that's coming in from the UI component development. Uh, Dean on our side has been working with Max on our side to really just kind of hammer in all of the prettiness into the UI kit that we would expect out of um, at least a bare minimum user experience. So hopefully we'll be able to dive into that soon. But otherwise, I mean, it's we're kind of in a little bit of a lull, uh, at least in terms of things that are actually exciting to talk about. Um, I mean, I could easily dive into bugs that have been fixed and like gotchas that have happened in specific integrations. But I think that those are more interesting uh, only for the people that actually use it rather than uh, kind of like a global audience. So, um, so far, I guess to summarize the feedback I've been getting, it's been really positive. Um, there have been a lot of developers who have uh, really enjoyed the fact that they can kind of build their own um, framework around how this works. You know, the, the way that all of this has been built is building blocks. Um, down from EOSIO core is the very basic building block up to ESR, up to the session kit, up to the web UI renderer. You know, you can, they're like Legos that you can kind of stick together in different ways. And the more advanced developers who want to do that are enjoying it. And then the developers who just want to integrate it into their app with one package uh, have also been expressing quite a bit of positive feedback about uh, how much easier this is to drop in than the things they've tried in the past. Uh, and the fact that they can actually do it with um, all these various wallets and it just kind of works. So I, I, don't, I haven't gotten a ton of feedback yet on the plugins, uh, but I think that that will probably come next as people start to realize that there are uh, ways to cut correct common user issues that they as developers may not be running into, but their developers are, or their uh, users are definitely going to run into. So we've been pretty happy so far with uh, the engagement. Obviously, we would always want more, but um, can only ask so much of developers who probably need to be focusing more on their own projects rather than experimenting with prototypes. So super happy and a big thank you to everybody that has tried it out. Yeah, I'm excited to try more of the plugins. I've been, 
spending my more of my time just looking at the session right in the session kit yeah right? and uh that's it's been it's been a lot of fun um and I, the thing i want to look at next is the resource provider yeah i don't yeah. there's a lot there's a lot there i don't understand it and uh you know i know you you you've been working on that spec for a while so yeah, and the plugin is actually kind of a rather simple part of that, but like overall as part of the ecosystem, hopefully that'll be uh, really impactful for making it easier for, you know, everybody just to use the network, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think I think so, but I, I really want to dig into it. It's one of those things where I feel it's, uh, I need to go deep on it. Yeah learn and then and go but uh what do you think are there other plugins that you think uh people should take a look at first the most um, useful, most common i think that that and the autocorrect one will probably be two of the most used ones and that'll just be a matter of preference mm -hmm. whether you want like for the resource provider it'll be okay are you okay with leaning on gray mass or another resource provider to solve resource issues. And then the autocorrect is going to be the decentralized version that won't be quite as clean of a user experience, but will still help users solve problems by themselves. So those will, I think, be the two big ones to start with. Um, from the most simple perspective, I think we have one called Explorer Link, which just is a way to it might serve as a good example on how plugins can work because that one after a transaction prompts the user with a link to go to a block explorer to view it you know it's super simple logic um and is primarily focused on uh how a plugin can interact with the transaction flow so that one might be a good learning experience as well oh sorry could you repeat that which one uh i think it's called explorer link oh uh... Yeah, I was thinking, I don't know, maybe I'm, yeah, I was thinking about just uh, exploring some of those pre and post hooks for transactions mm -hmm. by session. I thought that's where I would start. You yeah. Think, is that different than the transact plugin explorer or is it the same? Uh, this is an after broadcast hook. So it's okay. the same kind of hook. It's just uh, a different use of it. It's not performing logic. It's presenting the user with a choice at the end. Mm -hmm. So cool. it's all the same session kit hooks and the plugin system. Uh, they all flow through that same process. But it just like both of those resource ones we talked about are their transaction mutation plugins. And this one, on the other hand, is a user interface version of that. It's like we're not going to mutate anything or alter what you're doing. We're just going to alter the user experience at the end. Kind of. Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. It's all good? Yeah, I was saying, yeah, you need both. Yeah, exactly. And that it, kind of the reason I pointed this one out is it, it's it's a very different kind of transaction plugin. It just shows you the something at the end, which maybe is a good template for somebody that's working on an NFT project. Like maybe after you buy an NFT, you want to trigger the opening of some pack or some subsequent action. And this is maybe an example of how that could be done. Well, I hope I get a chance to check that out because uh, be, be good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I guess in terms of updates, I also forgot to mention, this is a new plugin that uh, Daniel has been working on on our team. Um, it uses the get transaction status API endpoint. Um, and after broadcast goes through and continually pulls that endpoint for the transaction that was just performed to make sure that the transaction reaches finality. So something like this could be used on a really serious transaction. Um, maybe it's depositing to an exchange or something. Uh, and you want to make sure that it reaches finality or some uh, measurable measure of success, I guess. Um, and so this will just continually watch that transaction to make sure it was actually successful. And I assume this is um, customizable, meaning you don't have to wait for finality. Maybe you want to wait for like three handoffs or something like that. 
Uh, I honestly haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> I prompted the idea for it, and then it was run with uh, while I was kind of out of the office. So I, I would hope so. Like I think that was part of the initial design idea was you could customize how quote unquote final you want the transaction to be. But if it's not, it should be able to be modified for that. And it's much better, in my opinion, than push guarantee, which you don't get any info. You know, this is more like you're getting updates, like mm -hmm. uh, you know, on confirmation in Ethereum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and then logically, you should be able to stop it at any point. To you know, if you have to say two confirmations, and then you kind of like say dot off or or you pre-specify. Uh, basically that you want to wait for only two confirmations before you start the call. Yeah. And I we have have something like this in Anchor, where we have, like, Anchor itself has a finality checker in it. Um, and we only use it for, like, when a new account is created. Like, we need to make sure that the account was created before we import it into the wallet. And we also use it when you're updating permissions, because we don't well, we don't actually switch the keys out in the wallet automatically right now, but we would need something like this before we go internally altering the, um, you know, like what key is set to be used in your wallet. So that this will be something we'll probably use inside of future versions of Anchor as well. So that way, you know, when you call update auth and you change a key of the account you're using, we will monitor the status of the finality of that transaction for it to become irreversible before we actually alter the internals of the wallet to update your key. So kind of maybe a good example of the kind of like serious type transactions that this would be useful for. Definitely and not every this, transaction. And does the finality checker do anything in terms of retry, if say it gets forked out of a block, or or you, you basically handle that in the, the callback of it, so to speak? I think you'd handle that off the callback right now. Um, but that certainly could be another plugin to potentially look at. It could be like a transact plugin retry or something, and then it would let you retry that transaction again if it did fail. Yeah, because like it's enabled in the new API, but I think very few have that uh, actually enabled in production. Yeah, like the same yeah. transaction too, you can specify, you know, like how many retries and yeah. wait for end block and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If if it was me, I think I have a slightly different point of view. I would probably use same transaction two, right, to try to get it to commit. But I'd use this plugin to really drive the UI, right, so that the user yeah. can see the UI changing. But I wouldn't try to use this necessarily recall or retry a transaction or try to repair something i don't know though i mean i haven't i don't have enough experience like maybe there might be some simple stuff where you wouldn't want to start all over again you just or resubmit it you, you just fix it like run out of resources you you're missing one cpu click or something I don't yeah know. but the retry usually uh, it's a sign like a hard fail in a way like the resources it will return it's not going to retry it automatically if you're using the api one We'll just retry if it's like not included in a block, but didn't actually get a failure of you know resources or authorization or something. Yeah, there's probably the different scenarios to use them both in. And then you'd want to probably calculate the transaction ID yourself, because you're not going to get a response from send transaction two until like you know it finally makes it in a block or whatever settings you have. So you mm -hmm. need to kind of, which you can do just locally, calculate the transaction ID yep. and uh, track it. Then then you'll be able to track it using, for example, finality checker. Yep. And for what it's worth right now, the session kit is hard coded to use just the normal send transaction API call. Uh, it is, I don't, I don't even know if it's, part of the scope of the project, but it would be possible to convert the, to create kind of a broadcast plugin, I guess, um, in which maybe it defaults to send transaction, but you'd be able to optionally switch that out to be able to use different broadcast methods, because we have three of them right now. Uh, and maybe we'll have a fourth or a fifth somewhere down the road. 
Um, but for developers to be able to choose which method the transaction is actually broadcast in would be pretty powerful. At least with the way we kind of currently have the architecture and multiple methods. If we can have just one method in the future, then maybe that idea doesn't make any sense at all. But So what yeah. kind of methods, like uh, push transaction, send transaction, send transaction to, or is there yep. something else? Those three so far, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, th there's more coming. There's going to be read a transaction, right? So, um, yeah, though, though there's a little bit more diversity coming and a little bit of a switch from three, three x to four. So, um, I think the broadcast methods would be useful, um, especially if you're trying to navigate between a three dot x release and and maybe try something out on a four x uh, antelope release. Yeah, 4x looks really promising, especially with the, excuse me, multi-threading on, you know, read-only transactions, including read-only calls and compute, compute transaction. So I think that's going to be super useful, at least for our stuff. Yeah, agreed. I With that call this morning, it was exciting to see all of that. Um, I think that for the read-only transactions, um, the way in the SDKs will probably go is doing that through the contract kit as opposed to the session kit, because those transactions aren't going to require uh, a session or a signature or anything like that. Um, so the contract kit itself, I'm hoping, will you'll be able to load the contract as some sort of contract object and then execute uh, those read-only queries in a kind of stateless manner, when at least when it comes to who you are, um, and then uh, get the results back kind of in a completely different way. Like, you won't call transact for read-only transactions, if that makes sense. Makes yeah. sense to me. But uh, yeah, that, that'd be cool. I can't wait to see it come together. Same here. Can't wait to find the time to get my hands dirty with 4.0 and see kind of the changes that are coming. Um, I'm biting my tongue on all the other cool things I want to talk about with that, but not the right call. <laughs> so awesome. Um, any other thoughts, feedback? Do we want to wrap this one up a little early? Yeah, I, I think there's so much. Now there's so much here. I feel wrapping it up early would be good and you know, maybe give us a chance to dig into it a little bit. That sounds great. So, well, thanks, you guys, for joining. And uh, we will do this again probably next week. Thanks, everyone.